Hey, it's Tim here. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a tablet exam I sat just last week, which is the Certified Associate Consultant exam, which is required for all Tableau partners. Essentially, if you are going to do work on behalf of Tableau uh, and sometimes for Tableau, they need you to have certain certifications. And so if you actually go to the certification page, uh, you can see there's actually quite a few more certifications. Uh, if you haven't done certification in a while, over the last couple of years, Tableau have added quite a few new ones. So they've got the specialist exam, which is the newest one. It's also the easiest one uh, out of all the product exams. And then you have the certified associate, then certified professional. Those top three are for desktop. Uh, down here you have server exams, uh, certified associate server, certified professional server. And then at the very bottom, you've got the partner exams, which are a requirement for partners who are working with Tableau. So certified associate consultant, which is more of a desktop sort of focused exam. And then you have certified associate architect, which is again, more of a service uh, focused exam. But essentially uh, both exams test your knowledge of the whole entire Tableau platform. They're not just exclusively about one product. Um, so I'm gonna be giving a review of the certified associate consultant exam today. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so this exam is sort of interesting. Now it's only available to Tableau partners. So you might be wondering, um, you know, what is a Tableau partner? A Tableau partner is essentially a company that's uh, partnered up with Tableau in order to either sell or support um, Tableau. And that could mean uh, either selling Tableau, that could also mean providing technical support or even doing something like integration services. Let's say a company wants to use Tableau, they want to deploy Tableau, but they don't have the skills and the staff. So what they might do is go to Tableau and ask, hey Tableau, do you have the skills and resources to do this on our behalf? And Tableau might then turn around and say, hey, we do, but we actually think it'd be better if you work with this organization who we trust and validate can do this really well for you because they have experience doing it for lots of other organizations. That's essentially a Tableau partner. And so one of the requirements uh, more recently, this is actually new as of this year, I believe in January, it became a requirement that all partners who have consultants working with Tableau have to have some sort of certification. And in this case, a certified associate is um, the most sort of common one that most people will use. If you're going into server and setting up infrastructure, then this, uh, the architect one will be the better exam. Now, the actual exam uh, guide is not available uh, to everyone here. You have to go to the partner portal so I've actually gone ahead and downloaded it and you can see it's here on my machine. So I'm just going to go through this very, very quickly to give you a flavor of what the exam is like. It's very different to the other Tableau exams. And that's actually the big gotcha with this one. If you're about to sit this exam, uh, this is something just to be very aware of. And the target audience is sort of uh, really sort of conveyed here. I kind of touched on this already, so I'm not going to sort of um, go over this again. Uh, but if I go down, um, you can sort of see what the learning resources are. So there's quite a lot of uh, information. There's obviously the Tableau learning uh, that they have. Some of this is e-learning. Some of this is uh, sort of general learning they have freely available. They also suggest that you've done the desktop one fundamentals training. This is a very basic training. To be honest, this covers probably your first four months of Tableau if you're a brand new user to Tableau. And the Tableau blueprint, which is Tableau's guide on uh, you know how Tableau should be deployed. If you haven't checked that out, I'll maybe do a separate video on that. Um, this is a really, really great guide kind of comes up with this sort of uh, really structured path for how you should deploy Tableau successfully within your organization. But it also takes into account things like soft skills around data literacy, proficiency, and also uh, things like building up a community of, of data inside of your organization. So that's something to be vaguely aware of. Uh, I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, then it just broadly labels every single white paper that Tableau has ever released. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about this. I mean, the white papers are great, but there are so many of them that I think just label Labeling all of them is, is a bit of a tough ask. So um, uh, when we go through sort of what's in the exam, I'll, I'll probably maybe try and highlight some of the better ones to look at. We've also got the vision analysis, uh, best practice guidebooks. There's quite a few questions in this exam that just literally simply ask, hey, look at this visualization what would make sense uh, to make this better? What would make this easier to understand? The users ask for this, what's the best way of going around this? Taking into account best practice, okay? So that's something to be, you know, roughly brush up on this. I think this is sort of inherent knowledge. You sort of just instinctually know what the right thing to do is, but sometimes it's just worth just double checking that, that's, um, that you're sort of down with the latest terminology, uh, things like pre-attentive attributes. You know, that sounds like a really co uh, complex term, but it's actually something they use in the exam. And it essentially just means a bunch of basic things, okay? So if you're not familiar with those words, you'll just get caught out. I'll come back to wording in Tableau exams in a minute because 
That just drives me up the wall. But nevertheless, um, recommended additional learning resources. So if that wasn't enough, there's a whole bunch of other learning resources that uh, they give you access to. Some of them are books, some of them obviously not going to be uh, free. Uh, some of them are free. Product support is, a, is another great suggestion. The whole of the support page. Um, so <laughs> um, it's an interesting take essentially. So um, that's just something to be aware of. Now, the exam format is very different to most exams. It's actually the same in structure. So 90 minutes, uh, you check in 30 minutes before. Uh, questions, multiple choice, multiple response, which sounds great. Number of questions, 55 items. Now, the score is, is scored a bit like an AWS exam if you've ever done one of those. Essentially, it's a scaled score. So there's a bunch of questions, 55 uh, items. Uh, you get the score straight away after the exam. But the exam is 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 sort of out of 750. I don't know how exactly that works. Um, but the sorry, the exam is out of a thousand. The pass mark is 750. Okay, and uh, the language is, is English. It's translated exams to follow. So because it's just this year, I think the translations won't come out for a while. Uh, and the exam delivery is Pearson View. Okay, and the delivery method is a testing center and online delivery are both available. So you can do this at home, which is a great thing. Um, you can learn more about the check-in process and so on and so forth there. What it doesn't say to you is that unlike other exams, this is not an open book exam, okay? So you can't have Tableau open, you can't open up a browser, you can't uh, sort of go on, uh, online and check something. You can't just quickly open up Tableau like you can in some of the other exams just to check something works to get make sure you get the right answer. You've got to be able to read the question, look at what's in the viz, look at sort of the different options and be able to sort of process some of that in your head. And they don't ask questions that sort of catch you out as a result of that. It's just sometimes some of the knowledge you have is confidence that you can open up Tableau and go check the answer uh, by using the product because you know your way around the product. Well, you can't do this with this exam. You have to sort of have a much stronger feel for what you can and can't do, which I guess is important as a consultant. It, after all, it's testing consultants. But a lot of the other exams, especially if you go all the way to even the certified professional, they're technically open book. So with enough time, you can sort of work your way through difficult questions and eventually arrive at the uh, right answer. So it goes into a little bit more uh, information about scoring and how it works, things that are unscored. There are some items that are unscored, and these are basically things to test the question. So uh, depending on the exam you get, everyone gets a different mix of these things. Um, and there's a, bit, a few kind of, you know, um, additional exam details. So exam items are written at a, a recall, understand, apply level. The exam is administered without access to the Tableau platform, the internet. So it does actually say to you here that you don't get access to the world, essentially. You can only, um, you know, use what's in your head. Um, and the way it works is there's, you log in to Pearson View. I'll go to that in a second. You log into Pearson View as a webcam and essentially someone's someone can watch you if they want to. Your mic's on. Uh, the exam screen fills your entire window so you can't really exit it without them knowing and that's it that's you and your exam uh, they get you to take a video of your whole entire exam environment i had an ipad on my desk and um, you know i got told to remove that essentially i had to remove every mobile device that i can communicate with away from the desk including my apple watch so you know even that's on your wrist apple watches these days can make phone calls go on the internet do a whole bunch of stuff so it made sense that you know they remove that um, as well so What's the exam like? So this is the exam outline. It's actually structured in sort of different sections. You've got five domains. Uh, so they've got perform, discovery, and determine scope. So this is basically just being able to understand like what you need to do essentially. And that accounts for 6% of the exam. So that's roughly one question, if that makes sense. 6% um, of, of an exam when there's 55 questions is about one question. So you'll get one question on perform, discovery, and determine scope, okay? Um, and then they'll also um, look at different things like recommend table roles based on use case. So these are these are lots of different sort of scenarios. And I think Tableau have done a really good uh, job here of actually just detailing out what they mean by each of these sections, because in some cases uh, that can be sort of tricky. So you need to have a comfortable understanding of each of these things um, because essentially I think the, the way this works is that the mix of questions you get come from a pool of questions and it just makes sure there's a balanced mix of questions from each of these pools and so you can get a whole completely broad uh, gamut of questions and you could go to an exam and not get a question on one of these things, okay? Um, and so it's just important to have that really solid understanding. You know, designing and developing dashboards, evaluate, preparing, connecting to data, plan and implement calculations in desktop, 
and publish, educate, and enable. These are sort of the high level uh, things that a consultant is expected to do. Now, the really challenging thing is actually this, the plan implement calculations in Tableau Desktop. The reason this is challenging, not because you know calculations are difficult, it's because you can't actually open up the product and just do them to validate stuff. So you kind of have to do this thing where you have to read the question, understand in your head what's going on and sort of work through it in your head. And in most cases that's fine, but there were a couple of questions which I found a little bit cumbersome because I was ex I was being expected to, you know, without a pen and paper, nothing, just expected to just look at the question. And I'll be honest, like the, the exam screen is just one big white window, it's really, really bright with like some uh, some text. I'd love a dark mode. Maybe that's a piece of feedback. If we could have a dark mode for the exam, that would really, really help. Um, and essentially, um, you're just staring at this white screen and it's just so hard to sort of envisage what's actually going on. So I'm, I don't want to make it a bigger deal than it is. It's really not that big a deal, but I'm so used to working with the product in front of me that if I want to test something, I just test it in 20 seconds. And this exam sort of challenges that philosophy a little bit. It's actually not how anyone would work with Tableau. And so that's that's sort of my only criticism of, of the product, um, of this exam, sorry, because in essence, even with most sort of basic calculations, um, it, you'd have an opportunity to test them and make sure they're doing the right thing. If you don't understand how to use them or where the functions are, that's a whole other matter. Um, if you don't know, for example, that a function exists, that's maybe an arguable thing. But, you know, one of the questions I've just done a video on was what, what does the mid function do? Like I've never had a need to go and find that out. But if I had the product in front of me, I could actually go to the calculation window and go to the assistance tool in the product on the right hand side and find out and then instantly take that knowledge into a calculation and use it. So as a consultant, I think part of what you have to do is also be able to adapt and learn new things on the go. And so when this exam is testing you on things like that and not really giving you some sort of way to go and validate whether it's the right answer or not, I think it's it's sort of a difficult balance to strike. Equally, I do think it's important that you do test knowledge away from the product so you know that people have it in their minds and it's not just someone sort of searching Google very quickly, which for the certified um, specialist and the certified associate exams is actually possible. You could very, if you're very great, good at like, you know, Google and you, <laughs> you, get, you get to the exam and you try and do that. In some cases, you can, if you're fast at it, you can just about get to every single answer um, if you know where to look on the internet. And that essentially turns into an exercise of uh, understanding the documentation. So um, I'm not discrediting the exam. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just sort of challenging um, what are these things actually testing? Um, and, and it's an interesting question. You can never build a perfect test either. This is a really hard thing to do. Um, companies look for accreditation as well. Uh, it's really important to them to know that you've gone through some sort of benchmark. And so, you know, given that scenario, you have to just live with what you've got. And this is probably the only way I could think of, honestly, of testing the exam and also adding a little bit of valid validity to it. It's not uncommon, for example, if you do an AWS exam, that's also a closed book exam. So you're expected to know everything in your head. It just so happens that Tableau is a very different type of tool to something like AWS, which is a platform. So therefore, you know, what you understand in AWS is more to do with concepts and the way things sort of integrate and work together. Whereas with Tableau, when you're testing a calculation and function, you're testing sort of a more nuanced uh, sort of part of the product. You're not testing people on the whole platform and how it comes together, what you can and can't do. Um, and those questions actually do come up in some of the other sections. So I think it's just maybe a, a side effect of this particular domain. But nonetheless, uh, once you've done the exam, uh, you do get the sort of pass max straight away. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. They do have some sample questions just to give you a feel of what to expect. So for example, this is a really good question. So this one, practice question two. You have the following. Uh, what is the result of the calculation? Now this is easy, okay? This is a very easy one to do. And this one, I do know what absolute and ceiling and floor does. Um, I've also just done a video on those because I thought I haven't done a video on those, I better do that. <laughs> so these are fairly easy, but when you get slightly more complex functions, then it can sort of be a little bit weird. So they do actually give you an example of, of how those answers work and what's the correct answer. So you can go in here and understand. But what you have to do with no pen and paper, just looking at a white screen um, is figure out the answer. And that that can that can be a little bit tricky in some use cases. But all in all, I think I really enjoyed the exam. I think it was really, really good. It was nice to have it done via Pearson View. Um, Pearson View have this page. Uh, once you go to this page, you sign up 
uh, you get the ability to sign in and go to your account. Once you're in your account, you go to your dashboard. Your dashboard will tell you which table exams you've passed and which ones you haven't. So I've actually completed this exam. Um, you can't see here that I've passed it. It's once you click into that, you can see the uh, actual outcome of the exam. But what I wanted to show you is the score report. So the score report actually comes in by email um, as soon as it's available, but you do get an email straight away to tell you that is available essentially. So uh, very quickly after the exam, you do get this. So it's, it's kind of nice to know instantly that you pass and not have to wait like the certified professional exams, which can be a long wait. So I mean, I've heard horror stories of people sitting them in January, and I think it's because of COVID and generally, you know, taking up to three or four months to get the results. So just bear, bear that in mind. This one, you get the results straight away. Um, and then the last thing is, of course, uh, the uh, little certificate that you get to say that you passed. I've blurred out a few things on this screen just to keep some of my own details confidential. But there you can see my score. I won't hide that, which is 842. So um, 842 out of a uh, thousand. I'll take that as like 84 percent or round that down. And 84 percent on uh, 55 questions. I'm just trying to figure out what um, it's, it doesn't work out like this because some questions have multiple responses. So you actually get a mark for each one of those. So it's not like a, a very sort of clear cut way of doing it. But if I was to sort of generalize this and just do 0 0.84 times by 55, I got 46 um, questions correct, okay? Uh, and also some of those questions don't actually count. So it's, it's a little bit hard to know exactly what goes on. I wish it told you what actually went well, um, just using these domains. Um, so we saw, we saw these domains up here. I think this is done in AWS. You can actually see a breakdown of how you performed across each domain. So that's another piece of feedback uh, that I think would be really good. It'd be nice if at the end of this, it just said, okay, we won't tell you which questions you got right and wrong, but across these domains, this is how you performed. Uh, maybe you got 100% on domain one and two, but didn't get that in three, four and five. Uh, partly because there might be more questions, but it's just good to know which area did you not perform the best in. And therefore, you know, if you're not performing the best in domain four and you happen to fail this, well, you know, you've got to put in some work because that's also the biggest percentage in the whole exam. So um, just little information like that, I think is, is nice. But nonetheless, I really enjoyed the exam. I passed, which is good. I think that's probably why I enjoyed the exam. It's good to know that you, you achieved something. Um, I'd love to know what your thoughts are if you've ever sat this exam, if you work for a Tableau partner and um, you kind of done this exam i'd love to know your thoughts um uh, but that's pretty much it for this sort of exam review the next one on the list if we go back to certification um i've got i've got a few certifications to do so um, i currently don't have any valid um, um desktop professional exam i've got the certified associate desktop that's due to expire in january i don't have the specialist because this was new and uh for someone like me, I think the specialist is quite basic. So um, I have a certified associate. That's a prerequisite to sit the professional. Um, once you sit the professional, if you let it expire, you have to sit the associate again. Um, the certified professional is probably at next up. So I'll do that at some point this year, very soon. Uh, certified associate server. Um, I don't have that because I have the certified professional server, but the certified professional server is about to run out again in January. So at some point in the next year, I have to sit the certified professional server to avoid having to sit the associate to avoid having all of them lapsed essentially. So um, that's that. The architect is probably the other one. So those are the sort of three key exams I'm shooting for. The certified associate, uh, the certified professional server, renewing that before it expires, and then the certified professional desktop. And I'll make sure I do a review on each one of those. Uh, and then probably at the end of the year, when I've done all of those, I'll do one big review on uh, certification in general, how to go about it, what you need to learn, what you don't need to learn, and how to go about structuring your path so you can pass all these exams the first time, okay? That's it for this video. Very, very talky video. I was just talking to the camera here today. Um, I've got a lot of content to get through though. So I thought this was a nice way of doing this just to sort of break things up from the norm. Just walk through some of this as well and show you some of the behind the scenes. Uh, because this is a partner in exam, it's probably something that you don't get visibility of. So it might not be of interest to many people, um, but yeah, hopefully you found it useful. If you've found it useful, hit subscribe, like, share this video. Uh, check out tableautim.com for a much nicer way to browse all my videos. And also uh, join the Discord channel hop in there ask questions i must say it's a little bit quiet on the discord channel it's just a shame it's an opportunity to ask questions people are maybe shy so i will do a separate video on that i won't go into that now but um yeah check out the discord channel i reach out and i'll hopefully catch you in the next video take it easy